All right, back here on Inside Wrestling Radio with my friend Scotty Wren in the house today. And before the break, Scotty, we were talking about your past and coming up in the business and the places you worked and stuff like that. Now, you've worked a lot for Ronnie Gossett, and Gossett's got a lot of heat on him and a lot of controversy following him, but you've had a pretty good working relationship with him over the years. Tell us a little bit about what's going on with Ronnie Gossett. Man, it's kind of funny because, I mean, you know, like you said, Gossett's got a lot of heat from different people for whatever different reason. And, yeah. You know, the thing is, it's like he's never done nothing to me. He's always been straight up with me, and he's told me, Jason, I'll pay you this, and he's always paid me that if not mm-hmm. more i kind of befriended ron and you know because like i said he never done nothing to me you know me i'm kind of if you say white i say black yeah so everybody's got heat with him so i'm gonna be his friend you yeah. know it's just the way i am because i mean you know as i just told you off the air i mean i'm a pretty controversial person i don't really care what people think about me you know but i mean ron is good man i mean his shows are phenomenal i mean he brings in all these old school names and i mean i, I have no complaints about ron i've had to handle some of his heat in the locker room a couple times you know but i guess i'm kind of his heat booker but Ron, Ron, Ron is good people, man. I mean, he's just misunderstood, you know. What, what do you think the problem is? It seems like, I mean, because he'll come around every few years and he'll just show back up. And, and That's he'll, the problem. And he'll run a big show with a bunch of names on it. And, and then all of a sudden, there's like, man, did you hear about what happened with Gossett? You know, and there's always some kind of little something going on. What do you I, think the problem is? I, I think a lot of times he gets, he may get caught up in, Ron, Ron has got big vision. Sure, yeah. Period. I mean, I mean, he sees a big movie screen. And sometimes it may only be a VCR tape. You right. know what I'm saying? Yeah, And that's you. no disrespect towards him whatsoever. I got you. Yeah. It's just that's the way the show may turn out. And, you know, you get so much money and time invested in a show expecting it to be Starcade, and it turns out to be WWC or NCW. You know what I'm saying? It's, sure. And there's no disrespect towards none of those organizations. I got you. I mean, I'm just yeah. saying, you know, different playing field. And Ronnie likes to be above everybody else in his shows. And, you know, honestly, his shows are a lot better than a lot of the ones I've seen. Well, I know he gets a lot of uh, money put into these shows. And he, he always gets these corporate sponsorships. And that's something local guys haven't been able to do. That's called the gift. Of Gab. Jimmy yeah. Mitchell taught me that. And Jimmy had it too, yes. right? But do you stay in contact with him now? Yeah, or I'm, is actually, I'm actually doing a show, Ron, December 9th. Okay. McConnell, McConnell, Georgia. Okay. McDonald. Down towards Atlanta anyway. Mm-hmm. But uh, it's, it's this coming weekend at Heritage Park Arena. Yeah, it's, it's October 9th at Heritage Park Arena. I'm actually supposed to team up with Abel Adams, go up against Rodney Mack from WWE. Yeah. And Rodney Mack's got a guy training. It's Soul Train Giant Jones or something. And that's coming up this weekend. Yeah, this weekend the 9th. Yeah. Oh, very cool. And who else has he got on the card that you know of? Shane Douglas, a buff bag. Lex Luger will be there signing autographs. You know, just a lot of those. You know, the Warlord Barbarian. I mean, he's got a lot of those. That's a pretty big deal. He's got a house of names, man. He, he's only got a, a handful of, I guess, what I would call indie workers right. that he uses. Right, you know yeah. I mean? Chris yeah. Hammer could be there, too. So, him and his big nose. I hope you're listening, Chris. Speaking of heat, now, you brought up you're a, you're a heat magnet, and you get into some trouble here and there. Yeah, I've been and and I understand that you had a little bit of a, a controversial incident that happened up at NCW last week, and you care to tell us anything about oh, that? absolutely. I'd be glad to elaborate. Awesome. Oscar sucks, but uh, <laughs> anyways, uh, Oscar. I know you know Oscar. He's mm-hmm. been on your show. I we had him in here. And you know, as far as I know, I hate Oscar. Okay. I mean, because I I met Oscar maybe five six years ago. He and I worked up in Hendersonville. Anyways, he and I were in a match, and he hooks me in the arm bar. He starts. Sensing in on my arm. I'm, I start giving him a little office. Right. Uh, apparently, he didn't know what an office was. Mm-hmm. And probably still don't. And uh, <laughs> A lot of people don't. So, I did it once. You know, kind of a little squeeze to the arm. Right. Bro, you're a little too tight. Yeah. Bro, yeah. you're a little too tight. Yeah. Finally, I'm like, dang, he's not listening. So, I just kind of slapped his arm. I was like... Yeah. Bro, you're a little too tight. Yeah, yeah, give me something, man. And uh, he wasn't listening, man. And so I was like, okay. So I rolled up. I had a handful of kahunas. <laughs> and uh, I didn't think what I could say. Yeah. But, uh, and I grabbed him around his throat. And yeah. I literally yeah. stand from the ground on from my back and pick this guy up and choke slam him almost to hell. And you know the sad part is? You can ask him about it, and I guarantee you don't even realize I did it to him. Right, yeah. That's how stupid he is. But anyway, long story short, that's the only way he knew me was through that. I, never, You never talked to him since that time? No, I don't even know the guy. I mean, I know who of him. Who he is, yeah, right. He yeah. don't know me. So, I, you know, I go to NCW last Saturday and just to hang out and have a couple beers, you know, mm-hmm. see some old friends. Well, I, I noticed that he, he's he's working Chris Fix. Chris Fix is a great guy, by the way. Always there. respectful. And, yes. Uh, so, they're calling, you know, doing their stuff, going over their stuff. I was just like, wow. You know, I mean, I just, you know, I'm kind of old school, so I mean, I don't see people call a seven minute match for an hour. You right. know what I mean? Yeah. And it's no disrespect towards Crucifix himself, you know, Oscar, I don't care. But so I'm just, you know, I'm just kind of looking. And yeah. anyway, Crucifix sees me, comes over, shakes my hand. Hey, hey, Ren, how you doing? Blah, blah, blah. Well, then Oscar comes over and he's like, Ren. And man, dude, I don't like you. But I'm, so I'm looking at him. Long story short, he's, he's pretty much eyeball gouging my girl. And so I'm like, okay, he don't know my girl. So I'm going to introduce him. I'm like, hey, you know, this is right. my girl. Let him know what's up. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, 
He goes, huh, she's kind of young, huh? I said, well, damn, dog, you know, Ray Charles can see that. <laughs> yeah. I mean, compared to me, you know, yeah, there's an age difference between me and my girlfriend. You know? right. So I just kind of I let it go, and I walked away. But then I got stewing on that stuff, man. Right, got to thinking about and it. I got to thinking about that, and, and Shelby looks at me, and she goes, Jackson, what are you doing? She can I'm see like, it coming. Yeah, I'm sitting there, I'm rubbing my head. I'm like, Arr. Yeah, she can see it coming. And, uh, I said, you know what? I said, for the past year that you and I have been together, I've had to tolerate a lot of jabs. I've, I've put up with a lot of bull crap. Mm -hmm. You know what? You live with me. We're together. Yeah. You know, it is what it is. Here, you know, yeah. So I'm, I'm done with the jabs. I'm done with the jabs. <laughs> and uh, so I decided to go there, and they're in the middle of the match. So disrespectfully, and I apologize, Chris Fix already, I interrupted them calling her spots. He's and, out back. Yeah, out back. Yeah. And I pretty much started telling Oscar off. Yeah, telling him what was what. Yeah, just going off. I can't repeat what I said on the air. But sure. Just pretty much let him know how bad he sucked. Not to ever disrespect me again. I made the comment to him. I, you know, I was like, look, dude, when I'm here, I'm Scotty Wren. That's the only one you know. Yeah. Don't bring Jason Justice's life in here. And uh, he said, well, who's Jason Justice? I said, that's my, you just proved my point. Mm-hmm. That's me. Right. You don't know me like that, so don't be pulling up my pulling the carpet out from under me. He popped off something, dude, and I swear to God, Rick, I didn't realize how fast my hands was, but I slapped my teeth to the <laughs> piss out of him, dude. Gave him when they reached back to 85 jobs. Yeah, right? yeah. I mean, <laughs> face started swelling up and stuff. Yeah. Then he's, you know, he's like, no, Ren, we're okay. We're okay. And I'm like, no, we're not okay. Yes, mm -hmm. we're okay. okay. Well, then fine, move. And yeah. I, I know. Finally, yeah. I just come to the thing, okay, I'm going to drop it. I'm going to leave. Well, dude, I go to walk off. He steps in front of me. I said, okay. Do it again. He steps in front of me again. I said, okay. I said, dude, what are you doing? You, I want you to shake my hand. I said, dude, I'm not shaking. I don't even like you. I'm not shaking your hand. I said, but you don't get out of my way. I'm going to plow through you, dog. Right. It's about to be a bad scene. And I did all this in front of half the locker room. So, yeah. yes, I insulted you like a little girl. <laughs> well, here's the thing about Oscar. We're really short on time here. But the, the thing on Oscar is, and he said it in here, he believes to live his gimmick 24 hours a day. I think if you're out in, in, in front of the marks, that's fine. Sure. If you're in Walmart and you want to be in your gimmick, that's fine. But in front of the boys, you've been around what, 15, 18 years right now. Yeah, wow. I've been around since 88, whatever it is. And Ricky Riggle in front of a crowd is the biggest a-hole you ever wanted to Absolutely. see. Right? But me and you sitting there talking, we're friends. We're going to talk like friends. I'm not going to be in gimmick while I'm talking to you. And that's the problem I think a lot of people have with Oscar. And that's the problem I've had with Oscar along. And we told him that, you know, in the past, look, dude, you can't be Oscar 24 hours a day. No, and especially around certain people, me. present company included, yeah. you know, you might get your bell rung because of Absolutely. it. Absolutely. Really know. quickly, Scott, I appreciate you coming, brother. Do you have any internet presence out there? Anything you want to plug real quick before nah, we end I mean, this thing up? Nothing really. I mean, just other than the fact, I'm just going to throw this out there. It is a true story that Scotty Wren has a younger girlfriend <laughs> that is more than five years younger than him. <laughs> Actually, she's more than six years younger. But whose business is that? That's mine, so stay out of it. <laughs> that's that's a public service announcement from your friend Scotty Wren here on Inside Wrestling Radio. <laughs> he, this warning. Beep, 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 beep. <laughs> All right, that's going to do it for the interview portion of the program. We'll be right back more inside of Wrestling Radio coming up next. <laughs>